In this video, I'll show you how to deploy a Python application using web host most platform. In my case, I found an open source Python based project that's working with Django framework. The first thing you need to do is selecting a service plan. You can do all of those things using our free hosting plan. But in my case, I'll be showing you how I'm doing this using my pro plan, because this specific project is going to take a little bit more disk space than the free plan. So let's get started. First, we need to access our web control panel. From here, we need to deploy our Python application first from website management tab, find Python app. Now let's create an application. And first thing we need to select a Python version. I would recommend for this specific project because I already know since it's written in Python version 3.8, I will just select 3.8. As an application root, we need to type public underscore HTML. And do not put any other information just yet. So just click create. Now the system is going to change application root automatically because it's already set for this specific domain name. In my account, I have only one domain name assigned, which is node-test-project.freewebhosmos.com. And as you can see, the system automatically changed application root path for us. It also automatically introduced application setup file and application entry point. Now, since this project is already running and it's absolutely empty, let me open tab and show you that our application is working and we see the confirmation screen saying that it's working. Now let's stop our application. And next thing we need to do is to actually upload our project into our file manager. So for that, let's navigate to file management, file manager, and from here, let's find our node test project.freewebhostmos.com, which is that exact domain name that's assigned to my account. From here, find public HTML. So this archive, this is something that I previously uploaded into file manager already. And other files that you see here got automatically generated by the system itself. So first thing we need to do is we need to extract our Django project, because as I told you, this is something that I have found on the internet and just upload it into this account. So let's extract this entire folder and let's locate that exact project that I'm trying to work with. Wait a few seconds then you can select exactly which folder you wish to extract. I will just extract everything and just click extract. Here you see the path where all the files are going to be extracted. So as you can see, this is the folder that contains all the projects written on Python. So for instance, I'll be using a Django based blog application that I have just decided to show you guys. And all you need to do is copy this folder into main domains folder, which is public HTML. So for that, click copy, edit the path to make sure that it goes straight into public HTML and click copy. Now let's navigate back to public HTML. And this is that exact folder that we have just copied from our main folder with all the other projects. Now open this folder, select all the files and move them to public HTML. Because to make this project work, all the files must be present inside of the public HTML folder of that specific domain name that you're working with. So just click copy. So now we can see that all the files from that specific folder got copied into our public HTML. So now let's navigate back to our Python app and have a look real quick into configurations here. And I'll show you a few important things that you need to know. So application startup file, this file got generated automatically by the system. And obviously it contains all the default settings that the system generated for us. So we need to navigate back to file manager, open it in a new tab. And from here, let's open that specific file. Passenger underscore WSGI.py. So the content here is that exact information that we see on the actual website. It works Python and its version. It works Python and its version. So to make our project work, we need to modify this file and we need to let the system know that our project is located as a specific folder. 
for that we need to edit this file according to our project. So the startup file may vary depends on the project that you're working with. So in my specific case, I'm working with Django Framework and Django Framework has this specific configuration. I will make sure to leave this information inside of our documentation where you can always just copy this information and edit a few things here to make your Django project work properly. So let me explain real quick what this file actually means. So it says the exact path to our project. Instead of system username, we need to introduce our username that system itself has generated for us. To find this information, there are a few locations for that. First, you can grab it from the client area directly. For example, if you click manage and scroll down, you will see username. So this is your username for web control panel for this specific service account. So let's navigate back here and paste this username. So now everything seems to be correct. Now here, we need to define a variable of our Django project. So as you can see here, I have blog.settings. This is something that you would need to change based on the project that you're working with. So for example, the reason I have blog and settings is because I have folder that's called blog. And inside of that folder, I have file settings because this is settings for the entire blog project that I'm working with. That is why my variable here is going to be blog.settings. Again, it really depends on the project that you're working with. Now let's start our application and refresh the page just to make sure that we have some information here. You can see that I've got error 500, internal server error. It's because the project is not completely set just yet. So next thing we need to do is we need to install all the requirements. Every single Python project has their own requirements. So when I have this file here, this is all the libraries that are going to be installed to make my project work. So to run this file, we need to access web terminal. To access web terminal, you can go to development tools from your web control panel and click terminal. From here, we need to run a pip command, but it won't work unless you enter virtual environment. Now to get into virtual environment, we need to get back to our Python application. For the ease of use, just open it in a new tab and from here, click edit on your application. And you see this link? This is the exact link that will allow you to get into the virtual environment for this specific project. So just click on this link, ensure that it's copied to the clipboard, return back to terminal and just paste this command here. Click enter and you'll see that right now I'm inside of my virtual environment. From here now, we need to run the pip command and install all the requirements. So for that, we need to type pip install r requirements.txt. Click enter, wait a few seconds, and you have to ensure that this installation went successfully. In my specific case, you can clearly see that I've got an error saying that some of the libraries couldn't install. If you read this message carefully, you will find that the system will offer us to replace one of the libraries to something else. So in my specific case, I have this library that's called PSY copg 2 that needs to be replaced with PSY copg 2 binary Now, if I return to file manager and open my requirements.txt, you can see here that I have this library, PSY copg 2 already predefined. And this is the exact library that system couldn't install. So instead of this library, we'll just place the one that system offers us. Click save, return back to terminal, and let's run this command once again. Wait a few seconds and ensure that everything got installed properly. As you can see, I'm not getting any errors and this time everything installed successfully. The only thing that Terminal is returning to us is offering to upgrade one of the packages, but you can do this later. It won't affect our installation whatsoever. So let's return to the application and restart our application. You have to make sure that each time you do whatever change, you would better restart your application. Otherwise, you won't see any changes. Now let's restart the page and see what we're getting now. So we are almost there. Now we see some other errors, and this is actually a debug screen from Python, from Django itself. 
showing us what is wrong. And my first problem here is that in allowed hosts, my domain name isn't specified. Well, as I already mentioned, I downloaded this project from somewhere else. So this is not something that I created personally. And that is why this project needs some adjustments. Now let's return back to our file manager. Let's navigate to blog folder. And from here, you'll find settings.py. We need to modify this file. And first we need to find allowed hosts. This is the exact thing that browser is complaining about. And we need to replace this thing with our domain name, which is node test project .com in my case, click save. If I would refresh the page, I won't see any differences because I need to restart the application first, restart the app, return back to the tab with your website and refresh the page. Now I can see that we get another error. Now it's complaining about Unix socket that cannot be accessed by the following path. Well, keep in mind that you're inside of a managed environment and you simply cannot access Unix socket directly. That is why we need to find inside of our settings file path to our database. So scrolling down, I see database here and host isn't specified. Now we need to type just a local host address. It's default for everyone. It's 127.0.0.1, or you can just type local host. It will be better if you use local host IP address, which is 127.0.0.1. Click save, return back, restart the application, and let's see what actually changed. All right, that error is gone now, and we get another error that is telling us there are no database because we didn't even create any database yet. This project requires Postgres, so we need to return back to our web control panel, open databases tab, and find PostgreSQL. Click that, and let's create some random database. I will just do this for test, so I will call it test. My username will be created with exact same name, so just click create database. It got created, and from here you can see password that database has generated for us. Now, quick tip here. If let's say you somehow lost this password or you just forgot to copy it, you can always change this password. And let's change it. So instead of this password, I will just generate another one and use my newly generated password. So let's go to list database users, locate this lock icon, click that and introduce new password. Password must be at least 10 digits. So I will create one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four times set new password has been set. So now let's go back to our settings.py and set our variables here. So as for the database name and username, I will just copy my existing name that I have just created and let's assign new variable here. So as for the name, let's type this name that I have just got. And as for the password, we'll use that password that I have used. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, let's click save. Now one final step, let's refresh our Python application once again. Edit the application and click restart. Now let's navigate back to our website and refresh the page. All right, one last error, I think. It's telling us that our database is pretty much empty because we have just created the database, assigned all the credentials, but there are nothing inside of this database just yet. So we need to import some data from our project into the database. For that, luckily, we have just an easy command that in this specific case will let us to easily copy the entire database. And this command is python manage.py migrate. So what this command will do, it will migrate all the database tables, whatever else that's required for our project from a specific location of this project into database that we have just created. So let's run this command, wait a few seconds. Let's finally restart our application and refresh page once again. And voila, as you can see, the project is up and running using Django and we are free to use it. So just for test, let me also create an account here real quick in this application. Username, test, email address, test at test.com, password. And let's sign up. All right, I was able to create a new account successfully. As you can see here, my profile is here. I can create a post. Let's create some test post, create. And this is it, guys. One more quick tip I'd like to show you guys here is that you can check how much of a disk space had left. So for that, 
you'd need to navigate to website management, site summary, user statistics, and click on disk usage and click update. You can update this information once in every 10 minutes and it will show you your actual disk usage. So as you can see, my entire project with all the archives, folders, and everything that I have inside of my file manager is taking 561 megabyte out of 25 gigs of my entire disk space. So this is it for this video. We have successfully deployed Python application, installed Django-based blog, and set it up from A to Z. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more videos like this.